Good morning again. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Let us pray. Lord, we are so grateful and thankful for your mercy and for your grace. Now, Holy Spirit of God, open the eyes of our heart, for we desire to see you, O oh God, through the teaching of this word. Continue. Continue to lead and guide us. Now, Father, I ask that through the power of the Holy Ghost that you will bring clarity to this text so that we, when we leave this place, will be filled with the engrafted word. We thank you now, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. The word for today will be coming from chapter 12, verses 12 through 13. I will be reading from the New Living Translation. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Verse 12 says, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up only one body. So it is with the body of Christ. Verse 13 says, some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves and some are free but we have all been baptized into Christ's body by one spirit. And we have all received the same spirit. And the word of the Lord is blessed. For my subject this morning, I want to use this phrase, your gift is no better than mine. In our text on this morning, we shall see members of the human body compared to gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, in consideration of this passage, I want to drop down to include two other verses, verse 20 and verse 27. They say, but now are they many members, yet but one body, and now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Here, Paul is using a comparison to the human body. He says, as one body, has many members that are performing different functions, so should the members of the church perform different functions. The human body has many members, hundreds, even thousands of members. Now understand that in the church, the body of Christ have many gifts. Allow me to tell you a short story to bring some clarity to this text. While on a hunting trip, this man, stepped off a cliff, and he hurt his foot. When he went to the doctor, he asked the doctor, how many bones are in the foot? The doctor told him that there were 27 bones in one's foot. So the man said to the doctor, I think I hurt all 27 of them. No, the doctor said, you hurt only one. Well, I tell you, said the man, although I only hurt one of them, why is my whole foot in pain? Let us note that when one member suffers, they all suffer. The body is composed of many members. There are the bones and muscles, the glands and the organs, the nerves and the blood vessels. So the man goes on to ask the doctor another question. He guessed it was his tongue. The doctor said to the man, no. So he told him that the most important part was his big toe. For if it wasn't for his big toe, he wouldn't be able to stand up at all. There are many members in the body of Christ. Some of them we don't ever see. Sometimes it's the most important members in the churches who have served, and the church knew nothing about them. They were not the officers or the Sunday school teachers, nor the soloists or the preacher. They were quiet, unobtrusive folk who prayed and who exercised their gift of faith. Now, how does a person get into this body of believers? Well, it tells us in verse 13, for by one Spirit, are we all baptized into one body, 
whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who puts us into the body of believers and who gives a gift to each member. We are to function in that body and we are to use that gift. It may be that we are the big toes with an unseen but important ministry. We each have a gift and we are each to function in that gift. For the body is not one member, but many. Now, this fulfills Acts chapter 1, verse 5, which says, For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Among other scriptures, this particular scripture speaks of this baptism, which is common to all believers. Now, the church at Corinth implies by the fact that Paul does not exhort them to be baptized by the Spirit. Rather, he exhorts them, uh, asserts them, that they have all been baptized. The believer does not tarry or pray for this baptism. It occurs the moment of regeneration. You see, regeneration is the act or process of coming back, growing a new or a spiritual life. You see, our birth is distinguished from our first birth when we were conceived physically and inherited our sin nature. The new birth is a spiritual, holy, and heavenly birth that results in our being made alive spiritually. Man in his natural state is dead in trespasses and sins until he is made alive, which is regenerated by Christ. This happens when he or she places his or her faith in Christ. Ephesians 2 and 1. Let us understand that regeneration is a radical change. Just as our physical birth resulted in a new individual entering the earthly realm, our spiritual birth results in a new person entering the heavenly realm. Ephesians 2 and 6, after regeneration, we began to see, hear, and seek after divine things. We began to live a life of faith and holiness. Now, Christ is formed in the heart. Now we are partakers of the divine nature, having been made new creatures. Understand that it was God, not man, who is the source of this transformation. God's great love and free gift is his rich grace and abundant mercy, which are the cause of the rebirth. The mighty power of God, the power that raised Christ from the dead, is displayed in the regeneration and conversion of sinners. Regeneration is necessary. Sinful human flesh cannot stand in God's presence. In his con conversation with Nicodemus, Jesus said twice that a man must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. Regeneration is not optional, for flesh gives birth to spirit. The only means of regeneration is by faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross. When it says in verse 13, it tells us, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew are Gentiles, whether we be bond or free. Here, we are speaking of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who puts us into the body of believers and who gives a gift to each member. May we understand that we are to function 
in that body. And we are to use that gift. It may be that we are the big toes with an unseen but important ministry. We each have a gift and we are each to function in that gift. For the body is not one member, but many. Let us pray. Lord, we come on this day asking for forgiveness for not using, Father, the gift that you have blessed us with, looking at other folks' gifts. Let us not desire another man or woman's gift, for you have given to us what you desire us to have. Just as the story explains that the body is one, let us understand, Father, that when one member suffers, we all suffer because we are one body. Father, let us not be jealous or envious of one another. Let us not think that one member is more important than the other. Father, we thank you. We thank you that we have been made alive through regeneration. For when we place our faith in you, God, we are able to receive every benefit that you have given to us. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the change. For we thank you and we bless. Oh, God, we bless you that we're no longer the same. Hallelujah. And because we have accepted you, oh, God, the Lord and Savior of the family of God, Lord, we thank you and we give you praise. Amen and amen. May God bless and keep you until we meet again. I want to be a big toe.